Hello and welcome to Bermuda, where we're about uh, two minutes away from. When we decided to cross the Atlantic from Bonaire to the Azores, we never intended on stopping anywhere. The thing is, when you have been at sea for over a week and you've managed to pass that threshold of seasickness and fatigue, it is really hard to break the passage and start again. So when we approached Bermuda a few days ago and the weather looked pretty good for continuing across the Atlantic towards the Azores, we didn't have any particular problem that needed to be fixed. The idea of stopping in Bermuda felt somewhat frivolous. But because the weather hadn't looked continuously good to pursue our route, somehow that day we had put in our minds that we were indeed going to make a break. And that idea was really hard to shake out. And so 60 miles away from Bermuda, we decided that we were indeed going to stop. And at 4 a.m. we made landfall in Bermuda. This is so cool, guys. Now, here is what happened. Because we had been beating on a starboard tack for 10 days, the wind and the spray had put a lot of pressure on our spray hood and created a small hole. When we put the sail down, arriving in St. George Harbor, the small hole turned into this giant thing that now absolutely needed to be repaired. The second thing that happened at 4.30 a.m. in the morning, as we were clearing polar steel to enter St. George Harbor, in the very same moment that Ryan told the harbor master that we had indeed a VHF AIS, our VHF died. So what do you think happened, Ryan? No idea, honey. I think that the VHF box just, it's old and it just decided to shit out right now. The third thing that happened was that the forecast sort of turned and the system of low pressure that was supposed to be north of us had we continued across now became a much bigger thing that was south and had we chosen to continue towards the Azor, this is definitely something that would have kicked us in the butts. So needless to say, our frivolous decision to stay in Bermuda turned out to be a pretty good one and the first thing that we are going to do on our escal is to repair broken shit. The advantage of having Annette as a crew and her husband Willem as her support is that they own an online chandlery called Catamaran Supply. And before we even step foot on land, a new Raymarine VHF had been ordered for us. What would you see about the shipping? Because you're better with that, you're, you're good with the international stuff, so would you? Willem, I owe you the biggest steak dinner. No, you're a vegetarian. I owe you. <laughs> what, what, what is like the equivalent of a steak dinner for a vegetarian? Our little break in Bermuda wasn't supposed to last more than four or five days. But in spite of Willem's best effort to express ship our package, COVID delays and custom procedures are coming in the way. And that's how we are missing a great weather window to start our crossing toward the Azores. And we now have to wait another week in Bermuda. Which means we need to get a couple more PCR tests for us to stay on the island. That's dedication, honey. We don't have access to a host. In order to get our PCR test done, we need to travel across the island from St. George Harbor to Hamilton, the capital of Bermuda, on a one hour long bus ride. So the driver of this bus woke up this morning and chose violence. <laughs> I'm gonna vomit. Okay, it's like oh. double. It's like we will have to come back to the testing facility every four days that we are here. And while this isn't the most exciting experience, Hamilton offers a few good sightseeing opportunities. One thing that you cannot not do in Bermuda is uh, to leave Bermuda with a pair of authentic Bermuda shorts. Yeah, do, do I need to explain why? You should. Look at that! Got it! It's what we've been waiting in 
Bermuda for. As with most things in the world right now, like everything's sold out. So we actually had to order this along with a kit with like the AIS 700, which we already have. So yeah, now we're gonna open this bad boy up and install. Pro tip, if you wanna take crew on your boat, take one that runs and owns a, an online channel. It's, uh, thanks Annette. Thank you. Okay. Hey. We really appreciate you and we never want you to leave this boat. <laughs> Willem, I, I hope that you don't miss your wife too much. <laughs> She's not coming back, we're keeping her. So the big question is, is it gonna work and be up and running in the 30 minutes that we were promised? Okay guys, shall we can carry on the installation? <laughs> oh wow, Ryan is really passionate about this project. So I'm just like replacing parts, but of course some of the parts aren't the same size. So we. We replaced the little passive speaker unit down here. Yeah. This is the old mount, which doesn't work with the new. So we installed the new mount. Looks quite nice, actually. So this is the brains of the operation, and it's, as you can see, it's just blah, 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 blah. <laughs> So we need to make it more tidy. You mean actually connect her? We need to actually connect her. And please select the frequency band international. Okay. We also need to uh, update our chart plotter equipment. It is it is slowly dying. Uh, we're just we're just too cheap at the moment to replace it. Polar seal, polar seal, polar seal. Channel six nine. Polar seal, polar seal. This time I read you very good. Over. Wonderful! We made it work! Yay! That was really fast. Get a good again here. I couldn't have done it without you, Javier. Say that again, Javier. <laughs> you owe me a beer then. <laughs> Lots of beers. Yeah, it works. We just have to test one more thing. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, it's good. This is Iron Tiger. Iron Tiger. Channel one niner. Niner. Calling on a walkie talkie. What does this mean? What does this mean? <laughs> this is very important communications. Yes. Is anybody out there? But who are you talking to? The Coast Guard. Uh, yeah. <laughs> In the process of waiting for our VHF to arrive, we missed the perfect weather window to depart from Bermuda. And the low pressure system is now brewing north of us. With a storm forecast to blow across the northern part of the Atlantic, we much prefer to wait it out on anchor rather than facing it at sea. And so here we don't go again. And welcome to Bermuda, where we're about uh, two minutes away from. Oh. No way. I mean, probably with that line of rain. You see it? Oh, f yeah, back there. Yeah. Guys, what's going on with this boat in front of us? Oh, God. Are we dragging? Uh, we keep watching. We are not dragging. We are not dragging, but we have to keep watching. Now. Okay, so I suggest that right now when we have the time, let's go put shoes and it. Shoes and jacket, let's get ready, right? No, that boat's dragging. Something's not Okay. Dragging. Are we setting up our anchors? And then, do you have the anchor alarm? Yes. Okay. Let's go. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Whew. Well, that was intense. Yeah, that was really. What happened crazy. with that other boat? Oh, the, the wind switched? Yeah, the wind switched. Okay. Do you want me to back on the anchor again? No, just leave everything. Watching this boat and like well, I don't know what we could do, like put fenders, like you know what I mean? I'd probably hop on their boat and see if we can move it. 
Yeah. Are they, they on board? No. No, that's the thing. Because um, our anchor is right underneath them. Yeah, it is. So we can't go We've, anywhere. Sophie and I have been in that situation before. Oh, yeah? And yeah, and it's happened? not. It's shitty. It's yeah. really shitty. There is no way they're coming back to their boat now. Nope. Oh, I, I do think that they dragged a bit. Possible because yeah. the wind changed and yeah. their anchor must have could have reset. Yeah. Uh, let, sh do we have the VHS on, Ryan? No. How no. much we can do? No. No. But it, it seems like that's holding. Yeah, yeah, it does look like it's yeah. holding. Yeah. And we're holding. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad I let a little out. It gave us. No, that was good. Yeah, we seem to be holding. Look, all these people are off their boats. It's fucking scary. Yeah. I'd say we got another like hour or so of like he fairly heavy rain, and then I think things will calm down quite a bit. Okay. But I think we are doing the right thing by sitting up on the deck and keeping an eye on stuff. Well, that big. Whipper. No, that big whipper, that was way more than 35. Oh wow, it, you saw all the boats and they all... No, that's insane. I, it mean, was, I saw I, myself grabbing so I don't I know, fall. I did too. I was like, what the Jesus. fuck are we going to do? Like, are we sailing right now? Yeah. Good job, guys. Yeah. Uh, very nice. Uh, good teamwork. Jamaica at the Florida Keys. What? There's a place Wait, called I need to Coco. Go. This is so that's where you wanna go to get away from it all. Oh, Javier's coming. <laughs> so dreamy. Is Javier your man crush? Yeah. I gotta be careful about that because Andy Shell is also my man crush. But Javier is. Hi, Javier! <laughs> Don't pee yourself, Ryan. <laughs> oh man, it's a wet day today. Yeah. That's fine. Okay, Ryan, uh, what is going on? with the weather the new weather models are saying that we can get out of here pretty okay on sunday monday tuesday but starting like end of the week everything in the mid-atlantic to upper atlantic turns to a headwind <laughs> like how big of a headwind Ow. that's a little too high yeah, we'd, what have, do you we'd think? have some big tacking going It's on. not even that it's too high. We'd be tacking across the fucking Atlantic. It's, all, it's also that it's a lot of days of sailing up. It's a lot yeah, of days. Yeah, which we so. learned we really, really like. Well, the most frustrating thing about this is, I think, the whole getting everything ready every time. Doing the laundry, cleaning the boat. Like, like Bermuda is really sweet. I love Bermuda, but uh, every time that we go to the grocery store, it's $100. The thing to remember is the weather modeling the last five days has been changing like crazy, like even at between model runs, so like every 12 hours. So like, just because it looks like shit right now, it doesn't mean in like a day or two it's gonna look like shit. So it could very well be like by Saturday or Sunday, it starts looking good. I'm slightly more than frustrated. Yeah, I hear you. And I was saying that we're here together and we're gonna it's have true. a delicious dinner. And That's it's going true. to be okay. That's true. And you said you you said an important thing, which is that the universe has a plan for us. It does. That's true. Well, well, at least the weather in Bermuda this weekend is said to be beautiful. So, so hopefully we can go do some fun sightseeing activities. It's hard not to be frustrated though. So, you're stuck in Bermuda because you're waiting for weather? Fear not, there is a wide range of activities to enjoy while on the island, starting with my own personal favorite and something you absolutely need to experience if you ever find your way to Bermuda. Ordering a picture, or five, of the original rum swizzle at the place where the cocktail was created, the Swizzle Inn. So refreshing! Amazing, thank you. You're welcome. Cheers! Uh, strong, yeah. but hiding it well. <laughs> we received a mail from Chris Parker, who, uh, mind you, I think 
but the amount of money we pay the guy is just an amazing job. If departing Bermuda Sunday the 20th or Monday the 21st, the sooner the better, then I would generally sail north, northeast, northeast, reaching 40 north of around 60 west by Thursday. We will then need to formulate a plan for sailing generally east of the Azores. It is not yet apparent where and when we will find wind. <laughs> But best of luck so, <laughs> so you can leave this weekend. The earlier the better, but then you're fucked. So should we just say like, let's wait a few days yeah. and then we'll come up with a new plan. Yeah. Okay. Yay! Last we time. We made it. We Last time until the next time. We were only <laughs> tested how many times? Four, four times. Four. four times. Two weeks. Bermuda is a pretty good place to be stuck in when the weather is good and you can go to the beach. We also found trails leading to secret lakes and caves. Wow. Oh, guys. And after a day is full of beaching and trailing and waiting for weather or PCR testing, one cannot simply end the day without a good picture of Rum's Whistle. What's so funny, Annette? Yes, what's so funny, Annette? And I just suggested to swim out to the boat with ice cream. Sophie, how are you feeling? Ashamed. Why are you ashamed? <laughs> I can show you. I can show you. Because that bill was... I think that's why. Okay. So, at the Sweezel Inn, which is the original rum Sweezel place, for a picture, we pay $26. Annette and I have shared the picture of Rob the Sweezel a couple of times already. So when we came here and we ordered the picture of Rob Sweezel, I thought that it was going to be the same thing, but no. Why was it uh, different? What's the difference? What's the difference? Uh, well, it was a concentrate of Rob Sweezel. Next time you order a Rob Sweezel, order it with no ice. No ice. It was like almost three times the price, but also three times the alcohol. So, what's happening next? Well, I'm super drunk. You were right. I'm, the, I'm babysitting right now. The rum swizzle and the swizzle in. Oh, it's very strong. It is strong. So, I'm babysitting them right now. <laughs> How many did you have? Well, just one picture. Just one. But the picture. Our boat is way overloaded with weight. <laughs> you know who else is way overloaded? Sophie. The rum swizzle! Do you know when the, was the last time I was that drunk? <laughs> no. Well, it was a long time ago, okay? Sophie, clean your feet off before you go on the boat. Clean. <laughs> no, you gotta take the dinghy. You Sophie, right. off the boat. <laughs> How am I supposed to record my, to clean my feet? Good morning. I have a headache today. She's sitting here laughing because it's funny. I mean, you shared that jug of rum swizzle with I me know, too. I know, but I feel so bad that you have a headache because I am, I, I don't have one. From now on, I and will call you. And then we got you. this thing dropped off. It's more rum swizzle. Oh what? Where did this come from? From Tom's boat. Some, some fine neighbors we have. Tasty and fun. Customized headache for $60. Good evening and welcome on board Polar Seal, where tomorrow we are finally leaving Bermuda to go to the Azores. And oh, oh, this is bright. There's a lot of, there's a lot of brightness. The good news is that the weather window that we wait for looks good for us to start crossing tomorrow. And I am pretty excited. I think that this is about the seventh time, sixth or seventh time that we head offshore for a long passage and the atmosphere on board is pretty relaxed. It is so relaxed in fact that um, our crew member decided to take an entire day off and go on land and it's 7.30 and we're starting to wondering if we've lost her. Hopefully he comes back. Right now, Ryan is packing up the dinghy. We have spent the day cleaning the boat and prepping some food for tomorrow. We took one last run to the grocery store to buy some dairy and some eggs. And um, well, 
I'm enjoying my last glass of wine before, um, yeah, at least two weeks. We sail sober. All right, guys, let's go across an ocean. We're down in Cocoa, Jamaica, ooh, I want <laughs> to Bermuda, Bahama, Cocoa, Key Largo, Montego, ooh, I want to take you to the Cocoa Mall, you get there faster and you take it slow. Wow, we didn't know we needed such a huge storm to see this fantastic performance. That's where we want to go. Way down in Kokomo. <laughs> and then uh, I gotta get the saxophone out.